like in Mark at the baptism, it says the the uh, Holy Spirit descended into him. Uh, and that's like the Gnostics and others that said Jesus was basically the channeler for a right. heavenly being, an angel, etc. What is the New Testament? Where did this come from? Most folks uh, who study this think the epistles of Paul were written in the 50s. Uh, CE or AD, whatever you prefer, and, and that the Gospels followed uh, a few decades later. But, uh, and this is uh, in true of even some mythicists like Richard Carrier and Earl Doherty and so on, but I think they're too conservative, believe it or not. Uh, I tend to go with the Dutch radical school of the 19th century. Uh, Bruno Bauer, uh, W.C. Van Manen and others said, no, uh, it kind of looks like all of these letters attributed to Paul, all 13 of them are pseudepigraphical, that is written pseudonymously, that, uh, yeah, there was a Paul, but he was a famous name, and they just attributed their own stuff to him. Uh, critical scholars like Bart Ehrman today say half of them are not actually by Paul. They, they can see, well, yeah, this is an anachronism. This is a different literary style. And they say half of them, okay, he didn't write these six, but these seven he did. Well, uh, Bauer and Van Man and another said, hold on a second. If you apply those criteria consistently, you got to give up all of them. They all appear to be too late in the game to actually, if we know anything about this, Paul, and this stuff couldn't have been written that early. He's talking, the author's talking about keep the traditions that I delivered to you. Paul's teaching, uh, given a couple of months before to the Thessalonians, is a tradition, and, and various other things. Uh, and so, were the, when were the Gospels and the Epistles written? I tend to lump them all around the very late first to the mid second century. And uh, who wrote them? We don't know. They're either pseudonymous or anonymous, like the Gospels. No names in the text. They've just been tacked on with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John probably in the second century. Uh, and of course, the Gospels are narratives of Jesus. And as I already said, I think almost all of the narrative material in them comes from the Old Testament. So they're very, very close in some cases. Um, others have uh, big clues. Uh, the uh, the uh, Book of Acts also is based partly on the Old Testament, partly on Euripides, the Bacchae, uh, that was very influential in, in the book of Acts, I think. And um, the uh, the epistles, loads of them by, by different people, and uh, again, pseudonymous uh, uh, or anonymous, like the three epistles of John. There's no name on those at all. And uh, so they're in the book of Revelation, of course, a, a big favorite. I, I always enjoy that one. Th this uh, thing that purports to be a series of visions of the, of the heavens and the future, that was a common genre. We, we're swimming in apocalypses uh, written by Jews and Christians, and uh, they don't really record anybody's visions. That was just a literary gimmick. Uh, and uh, again, not deceptive. That was just the genre. It was a way of getting your speculations and beliefs across. Now, many modern Christians see the Gospels and the Gospel stories as the source of Christianity. Is that true? No, oh, I think the Catholics are right on this one, that it was the church that produced the Bible, not the other way around. Right. Uh, and uh, there were many other uh, books that many Christians read, uh, some of them considered uh, to be parts of the New Testament, even by uh, church fathers for a while. And then they kind of dropped out of consideration. Uh, but uh, the, the earliest Jesus believers predate uh, the, the Gospels, and this comes up in in the whole mythicism thing, the, the belief that Jesus didn't, the theory Jesus didn't actually exist as a historical figure, partly because in the Pauline epistles, there's no real discussion of a Jesus who was a wandering teacher, who ever did any miracles, who no, nothing about him healing and exercising. Uh, there's... Uh, in nothing, uh, the, uh, none of the stuff you find in the Gospels, with one or two exceptions, it kind of looked like they've been added later. And uh, why is that? I mean, if, if Paul, for instance, if this is really him writing, 
and and such material was available. I mean, teachings of Jesus, surely he come, he addresses a lot of the subjects that come up in the Gospels. Why doesn't he quote Jesus? Mm -hmm. uh, and and so you begin to think, well, there were people that believed in some kind of Jesus before there was any gospel material. Wow, that's amazing. So it seems to be that the Pauline epistles predate the gospels. They might, but in my view, you can't really tell, and it almost doesn't matter because the the point would, in any case, would be that the group, either the person or the group of people that wrote this, knew nothing about gospel type material, sayings, narratives, and, and maybe they they didn't know about it because the stuff didn't exist yet. We we don't know though, but if if the former. That just means they seem to have stemmed from a time, even if they're written later, the, the epistles seem to come from a group that maintained an earlier form of Christianity, one without uh, all this ado about a historical Jesus. Now, when you look at the four Gospels, do all the Gospels agree on the nature of Jesus? In other words, was Jesus born the Messiah or the Son of God, or did he become the Messiah later? Well, it appears from the earliest of the Gospels, Mark, that uh, that Jesus becomes the Son of God at his baptism or at his resurrection. In fact, it's kind of a compromised document, as, as William Vreda pointed out in the 19th century, that he's juggling two different current Christian views, one that Jesus uh, was the Messiah as of his resurrection, uh, the other that he had been uh, made the son of God at his baptism, and he tries to figure out how both could be true. But in either case, there's no pre-existent heavenly Jesus in, in that view. Matthew and Luke seem to believe Jesus is a kind of a demigod, that there's no Jesus before the, the birth in Bethlehem, and he's born the son of God then. Uh, and uh, then John's gospel knows nothing of a virgin birth, interestingly. Uh, and uh, it, it has people refer to Jesus as the son of Joseph with no embarrassment, no correction or anything. Uh, and uh, it, it has Jesus as the earthly incarnation of the divine logos, an aspect of God uh, and uh, who, that existed with God before the world was created. And so they're, they're very different. Views. It's it's easy to see how they they evolve progressively though because if you say the like in Mark at the baptism it says the the uh, Holy Spirit descended into him uh, and that's like the Gnostics and others that said Jesus was basically the channeler for a right. heavenly being an angel etc. Well uh, then uh, later on you you it's not that much. Uh, of a step between saying that and saying that the divine logos was in him and maybe that began earlier. Nobody ever thought Jesus lived uh, before the creation in a human body somewhere. Uh, so it's not that big a step, but in fact, they don't seem to have exactly the same view of Jesus. Is there any evidence for a historical Jesus, anything secular? Uh, no, uh, the the uh, hoopla that never seems to die about uh, Josephus, the historian who wrote at the end of the first century, whether he mentions Jesus or not, I think that's been blown out of the water. The, the mini paragraph in which uh, he discusses Jesus in our manuscripts, which are much, much later than the date of writing, uh, it has been demonstrated to, in three different ways, I won't bore you into a coma with, but to, to, it couldn't have been written by the guy that wrote the rest of this huge book. I mean, you can tell what his writing is like, et cetera. Uh, and, uh, that, but even if he did write it, he's writing like 60 years after Jesus would have died. And so was he a witness of Jesus? Of course not. Uh, and, and nobody denies that that Christians believed there had been a Jesus by the end of the first century. Uh, and so what would he know but that? And the same thing with Tacitus writing about 30 years after Josephus. He knows that supposedly 
a guy named Christus or Crestus, manuscripts differ, uh, was crucified under Pontius Pilate. But how would he know this? Well, almost certainly from Christian preaching. So that's that's evidence for Christianity, not for Jesus. And that really is it. There really isn't any. Now, the, the classic response that uh, Bart and Ehrman and others say is that, well, you see, if you could say that if Jesus was the miracle working Superman of the Gospels, they could hardly have avoided mentioning it in secular sources. It would have been big news. But of course, critical scholars say, no, that stuff is legend. We're not fundamentalists. But, but was there a Jesus around whom the, these legends gathered? Oh, yeah, there must have been. And I, that's where I differ. If you if you cut Jesus down to size in that way, you're basically saying, oh, yeah, there's a his, there was a historical Superman. All right. But he was just Clark Kent. <laughs> well, why would anybody have taken notice of this guy? Right. Uh, why would Christians have taken note of him? And uh, one more uh, wandering rabbi, I mean, there were loads of those, so why? Uh, and so I, I don't think there really is evidence. That doesn't mean there wasn't one, but I just think you'd have to have some better evidence. And, and all of, it wouldn't even take much. Suppose we've got old papyrus letters from this very period that were preserved in Egypt in the dry climate. Uh, nothing big, little notes, almost like today's post-it notes. Uh, businessmen would would send letters back to their wives, uh, asking them, "How you doing? Here's what I'm up to." Suppose we had one of those. Uh, that uh, where where some merchant said to his wife, I was in Jerusalem and chanced to hear uh, the, the famous Jesus, the Nazarene, a teacher of wisdom. Suppose that's it. Like that would be enough to, to throw out the whole mythicist uh, hypothesis, but there isn't. Now, maybe they'll discover one and that'll be it for mythicism. I, I'm not married to the idea, but failing that, we just don't have anything that would really count as evidence.